join me in the recitation of the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With liberty and justice for all, indeed. To be led in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag by Lake County's Young Marines seems precisely the right start to our 2020 Veterans Day celebration, as it provides us with hope and inspiration for our future as we celebrate our past. Hello, I'm Mark Levitt, Deputy Chief Judge of Lake County's 19th Judicial Circuit, and it is my privilege and pleasure to be with you today as we gather virtually to proudly honor our veterans. Due to the COVID pandemic and with public health and safety as our highest priority, we're disappointed that we're unable to host veterans and their families at our courthouse this year, but our commitment to the celebration remains undeterred. Retired Judge Margaret Mullen will join us to share a historical perspective on Veterans Day and the Veterans Day History Project. You may know that Veterans Day was created in 1938 as Armistice Day to mark the end of fighting in World War I on November 11, 1918. But did you know that after World War II, the greatest mobilization of armed forces in history, President Eisenhower proclaimed the day Veterans Day in 1954. Today, we remember our deceased veterans, but we also thank and honor all living veterans both in the past and those currently serving, especially those in harm's way. Congress created the Veterans History Project in 2000 so that the voices of the men and women who served this country would not be lost and to preserve for our nation your unique military experience. Here in Lake County, we've celebrated this event for nine years. And that is a testament to this special place to our wonderful judges, especially our military veteran judges, to the generous court reporters who professionally record and transcribe your stories so that they can be properly enshrined in the Library of Congress, to the lawyers whose talents guide the interview, and to every community organization that brings together all of you and those who came before you to tell your story of service and sacrifice to our nation. The generations of the future need to hear what you have to say. I'm retired Judge Margaret Mullen. Thank you for being with us today and thank you for your service. Retired Judge and former Navy Reservist Michael Foos will now provide his personal observations about the modesty our veteran heroes often demonstrate in sharing their personal journeys in service. It's been my honor and privilege to have served on the Veterans History Project here in Lake County for the last eight years, beginning in 2012. And I wanted to talk just a few minutes about how that experience has impacted me. Growing up in Chicago, in the Chicago area in the 50s and 60s, it wasn't unusual for myself, my friends, to have fathers, brothers perhaps, that had served in the armed forces, especially in World War II. My father and my uncles all served in the Navy in World War II, and although they expressed pride in having served, uh, they never really talked about what they did or what they saw. Uh, to that extent, they were typical of many people from that greatest generation. They dropped their lives, picked up and uh, served and did what they were asked to do. And when it was finished, they just wanted to get back to their normal life. My father, like so many other first generation Americans, felt that in a way he had, I think, become uh, maybe more American uh, by having served our country in the armed forces. And I, I think that's a, a fairly typical reaction by immigrants and also uh, first-generation Americans I've met who've served. During my time on the committee, I've had occasion to meet uh, heroes of every kind. I call them heroes. They themselves would deny that they're heroes. I met people from a Medal of Honor recipient from Vietnam, uh, a Pearl Harbor survivor, a member of the Band of Brothers, a member of a um, bomber crew that was shot down over Germany and held as a prisoner of war for many, many months in terrible conditions. 
I met riflemen, people who liberated or helped liberate concentration camps and saw the horrors of World War II, and people from other conflicts as well, who described all their experiences and the sacrifices they made on behalf of our country. Two qualities stuck out in virtually everybody I talked with, and that was all the way from the highly decorated veterans to anyone who served who did what they were asked to do in the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, or Coast Guard. Every single person contributed and worked as hard as they could to do whatever they were asked to do. But the two qualities were humility. Every single one of them I met denied that they were heroes. The heroes were the ones who didn't come back is what I heard over and over again. But the other quality I saw that was expressed and exemplified was pride. Every veteran I spoke with was proud of having served, of having done their part, whatever they were asked to do, of being a part of something larger than themselves. And that has caused me, frankly, to become um, more humble and also very grateful for the people who have served our country in time of need, who have done what they were asked to do and uh, ask nothing in return. I'm retired Judge Mike Foose from the 19th Judicial Circuit, United States Navy Reserve, retired. Thank you. Retired Judge John Scully, a graduate of the Naval Academy and retired Naval Captain, highlights the importance of preserving the stories of the common soldier before they are lost. But there are so many people like that that didn't ever want to talk about it for years from Korea, Vietnam, Second World War. And a lot of these guys are starting to, starting to fade, uh, passing away, even, even in Vietnam. But we've interviewed even people after that. So we've covered people from 1937 up until the most recent wars. People were still on active duty just a year or two ago when we interviewed them. Uh, so we're covering, covering a lot of the history of the United States military, but not from the perspective of the you know, the Pattons and the MacArthur's and the Eisenhower's, uh, all those, all those people, you know, they're, they've got books written about them. They have maybe even movies about them, but not the average Joe, not the average guy or gal, uh, and, and the gals especially, the, the ladies, I'm sorry, the ladies, uh, you know, were, were loved by uh, so many of the individuals that were harmed and taken care of uh, Vietnam, Korea, Second World War, got these guys so that they could live. Uh, and th those stories aren't told. If they are, they're bits and pieces and they're not retained. Part of the reason for this program is to get those stories. They can talk about their friends. They can talk about the good times. They can talk about their unit that probably never, nothing was ever said about their each individual unit or each individual. Oh, ship. And Chris Tonto Paranto, former Army Ranger from the 2nd Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment, reminds us that these archived recollections serve as guide and inspiration for future generations. So it's important for all us veterans to get with the Veterans History Project and get our stories down and archived for future generations. So they know the truth of what took place and the courage and the sacrifice and the integrity and all the other values that we we instill in the people that are going in the military and the veterans that we have to continue to live by whatever values those are ethics integrity personal courage duty honor selfless service sacrifice everything that we have we can pass on to future generations by the stuff that we did while we were in uh, and in closing, I'd just like to say thank you to all your veterans out there. Thank you for your service. Thank you for those that are still serving. And when you get out and you become veterans again, thank you for everything that you gave for this country to protect this country's freedoms. Um, still the best country in the world, guys. So God bless you all. Thank you again. And uh, I hope to see you in, on the archive. Yeah, Jumbo. The Lake County Courthouse and community connection to those who serve is strong. Our own judge, Charles Smith's daughter, Megan, is a graduate of the Naval Academy and currently serves as a Naval Commander, while his son Brian is Lieutenant Junior Grade in the Naval Reserves. Judge Veronica O'Malley's son, Ryan, is a Senior Firstie at West Point Military Academy. 
Judge Donna Jo Vorderstrasse's son, Nathaniel Vorderstrasse, is a naval cyber technology specialist, and her son-in-law is a naval psychiatrist treating military patients. And Judge Michael Bitar is a former corporal in the United States Marines. They're joined by so many other members of our local legal community and Lake County first responders who have served, are currently serving, and are preparing to serve in the future. Each and every member of the courthouse community today stands to salute our veterans. We are filled with pride and gratitude for your service to our country. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land 